So um, I will report today about, I mean, the title says generic absoluteness for the definable power set of the universally bare sets. So in the talk, I will define what that is, and I will actually talk about a few more results. And uh, everything I will talk about today is joint work with Grigor Sargassian. And um, I mean, you can see Grigor's talk yesterday is the motivation for my talk today. So let me start right there. So what is the motivation for looking at these kind of models of determinacy? Actually, I they call them strong models of determinacy. Um, well, one of the main motivations is that these models can be used as ground models for forcing constructions that are in some sense more powerful than forcing over large cardinals. For example, um, I mean, one of the first things considered in that direction was Wooden's axiom star as a forcing axiom over a model of determinacy. And as we learned recently, Asper and Schindler proved that this is connected to the standard forcing axioms. So MM double plus implies star, for example. Um, why is it nice to force over models of determinacy? Well, Wooden, for example, forced MM plus plus C over a model of ADR plus theta as regular. So that's a very strong model of determinacy. And even more nice results have been produced. So Grigor Sargassian together with Paul Larson showed I mean, this was mentioned by Grigor yesterday already that you can force the failure of squ uh, squares plus mm plus plus c over some chunk type model. And that's also a strong model of determinacy, so it's also a model of ADR plus theta as regular. Um, and now comes sort of the but. I mean, how do you get this model? Yeah, I mean, this was also mentioned by Grigor. The model they used was constructed using very heavy inner model theoretic machinery, so called hot mice. Um, so one of the questions behind the work I will speak about today is if it's possible to get rid of these, I mean, I don't want to get rid of inner model theory, um, but I want to get rid of the heavy constructions and the heavy machinery behind it. Yeah? I mean, is there a way to construct such strong models of determinacy without knowing what a mouse is? So that's the good thing about today's talk. I mean, the mice will be used for inspiration, motivation, but actually not for the proofs. Um, and not for the statements of the results. I think so, yes. And um, so what is the base model for this? I mean, I will introduce this with more details, but um, the more precise question for today's talk is if it's possible to ex extend the model L gamma infinity R. So we take all the universally bare sets, the reals, and we construct over them. And we ask, okay, I mean, can this be a model of determinacy? Can we get even a larger model of determinacy of this form? And can we get generic absoluteness results for this model? Okay, so I will split the talk in three parts. I mean, the first part will be about introducing the concepts. Um, I mean, what is this model L gamma infinity R? I mean, I will briefly introduce universally bare sets and the notions of generic absoluteness I want to talk about. And then I will introduce the UV power set. So that's the first extension that we consider. And then I will look at a different type of extensions called chunk type models with super compactness measures. And I mean, the main results will be in both cases so that we obtain new strong models of determinacy that also satisfy some form of generic absoluteness. I mean, this generic absoluteness is actually known under the term ceiling. Okay, so let's start. What is a universally bare set? I mean, I'm talking to a set theory audience, so I'm not going to go through the topolo topo topological definition. Let's start with the one that I call the useful definition, at least for the stuff I want to do. Um, so whenever we have to trace S and T, uh, we say they're absolutely complementing if the projections of the trees are complements of each other in every generic extension. I mean, in this case, in every call omega z generic extension. And um, as proved by Feng, Margot, and Wooden, you can use this to obtain a characterization of universally bare sets by just saying a set of reals A is universally bare if for every set z um, it's the projection of a z absolutely complementing tree when that has a complement. Okay, so what are, why, why is this the useful definition? Or what is the property that we actually want to use? Well, the key property of universally bare sets, at least for me and for us today, is that we can use them to canonically extend things onto generic extensions. Yeah, so if you see this small picture here, I mean, if you have your universe V and you have a set A and that universe, I mean, if you wider the universe, you go to a generic extension, you add new rails. So what are, which of these reals should belong to A and which not? I mean, you have the original set, but about the new reals, you have to decide on which side they should go. Well, if you know that you have the green and the orange projections of the trees, 
then this completely determines what the, generic uh, what the set in the generic extension should be. And this is the property that we want to use. So um, why, why is this important in a model theory? So, I mean, I said, I mean, so in this talk, there will be two slides about inner model theory, about mice, and they will be used for motivation. Yeah, um, but, I mean, you can understand the theorems and also the proofs without knowing uh, what a mouse is. Okay, so we study canonical inner models and their iteration strategies. Um, and in, in fact, I mean, the complexity of these mice I mean, in terms of their large cardinals, is deeply connected with the complexity of the iteration strategy. Yeah, we can look at the iteration strategy, actually, for countable trees um, as a set, set of reals, and we can just look at the, the descriptive set there at the complexity of that set. And um, that is connected uh, to the complexity of the model in terms of like how many wooden cardinals does it have, for example. But now, Okay, if we want to get these iteration strategies, I mean, it's all about finding co-final branches through trees. I mean, such that the direct limit is well-founded. Well, in general, that's a very difficult problem. I mean, just take a tree on omega one and try to find a co-final branch. Yeah, without any inner model theory, this is a difficult problem. So why should it be easier with inner model theory? Yeah? So getting these co-final branches with all the nice properties we in addition want to have through infinite, like large infinite trees is very difficult. So it would be nice if actually we don't have to do that because they're all determined by their countable segments. So, I mean, the countable iteration strategies we can understand much better when we understand the descriptive set theoretic world. And, I mean, for countable trees, we can actually, in some cases, prove that there are iteration strategies. I mean, imagine how nice it would be if they already determined the strategies on the larger infinite sets. Yeah, so, for example, if we have an uncountable branch that's just determined by all the countable segments, and this is exactly what happens if the, the strategy is universally bare. Because if the strategy is universally bare, we can just go to a collapse extension. The thing is countable, we find the branch, and we, can, we know what the strategy is in these collab collapse extensions, because it was universally bare. So this is why constructing models with universally bare strategies is really what we are doing at the moment. I mean, that's in some sense, the only way we can construct really large iteration strategies. Okay, so what do we know about generic absoluteness in relation to universally bare sets? Well, if we start from scratch, I mean, we have Schoenfeld's absoluteness theorem that implies that the truth of sigma one two facts cannot be changed by forcing. I mean, it, he showed even more, but this is the way I want to phrase it. Um, well, can we generalize this? I mean, what I would like to do is, I mean, instead of just preserving sigma one two facts, I would like to preserve the whole theory of a model of determinacy. So can we take a canonical model of determinacy and just freeze its theory in all generic extensions? So let me state this a bit more precisely, or let me state directly what we know. Um, so theorem steel and wooden, if you have I mean, from this point on, there will be a lot of large cardinals in the room. I mean, for sure, we will assume a proper class of wooden cardinals almost any time. So suppose there's this proper class of wooden cardinals. And let's take two consecutive generic extensions, V of G and V of G star H. Um, then we can actually prove that L of R, so just the models, uh, or the smallest inner model of ZF that contains all the reals and all the ordinals, is a model of the axiom of determinacy. And in addition, there's an elementary embedding that's freezing the theory of L of R. So there's an elementary embedding between the, the L of R of V of G and the L of R of V of G star H. So actually, once we're at that point, the theory of L of R, of this canonical model of determinacy, doesn't change. But L of R is a very weak model of determinacy. I mean, it's the canonical model of AD. But if you're asking for stronger axioms of determinacy, for example, ADR, where also games where the players play real numbers instead of natural numbers are determined, then um, L of R is too weak for that. So let's just start gradually extending it. And when we are talking about generic absoluteness results, so, and we have these nice universally bare sets, so maybe we can just put a universally bare set to it, because there we know what we should do with it in the generic extensions. And actually, this just works. 
And the proofs are almost the same as the ones for LFR, by the way. Yeah? So if we fix a single universally bare set A, and we just look at the model that contains all the reals, the ordinals, and also the set A, then again, under the same hypothesis, we can prove this is a model of the axiom of determinacy. And there's again an elementary embedding that freezes the theory of this model. Um, so here, I mean, the elementary embedding, I mean, of course, I mean, we know what to do with the reals. It moves through, I mean, the reals of BFG move to the reals of BFG star H as before. And now we have this additional set A, but we know what to do with the set A because it's a universally bare set. Yeah? I mean, already in the definition on the statement, we are using the fact that this is universally bare, so we know how to treat it in generic extensions. Okay, so this was all sort of nice and easy. Well, if we can add one set, let's just add all of them. And surprisingly, the picture changes dramatically, yeah? because it's not so nice and easy anymore. Um, so let's, I mean, as on the previous slide, right, RG for the reals and V of G, and let's say gamma infinity is the collection of all universally bare sets. And we can write gamma infinity G for the collection of all universally bare sets in V of G. So then what happens? Yeah, let's look at this model that was already on the first slide. So we just look at the model over all the universally bare sets and the reals. So you don't need to write the reals here, they are there automatically, but just for moral purpose, let me add them. <laughs> um, so is this a model of the axiom of determinacy? And maybe if it is, we can ask even more. Is it a strong model of the axiom of determinacy? I mean, the word strong can be interpreted differently. I mean, for this talk, for example, I want to say, is it a model of ADR plus theta is regular? I mean, this appeared yesterday in Grigor's talk already. So as again, I mean, again, ADR is the hypothesis that every game where the players play real numbers instead of natural numbers is determined. And theta is regular means, I mean, theta is the supremum of all the ordinals where you can subject the reals on, and regular just means it's a regular. Uh, yeah, it's a regular ordinal in this case. Okay, so can we get nice strong properties like this in the model? And actually, yeah, maybe one more comment. I mean, why do we want this? I mean, remember on my first slide, uh, wouldn't use this to force mm plus plus c just over a model of ADR plus theta is regular. So if we want to use these models as ground models uh, for forcing, I mean, for example, as in Grigor's conjecture that was on the board over there yesterday, well, then having ADR plus theta regular seems to be at least very convenient to have. Uh, and we should have something more than AD, just some stronger forms. And maybe we can get even more. Yeah. Is there a generic absoluteness theorem for the theory? Just uh, like on the previous slide, I mean, can we get an elementary embedding um, between this model and different consecutive generic extensions? So we can just phrase these questions formally and put them into a definition. And this is what's, what wooden ceiling uh, means. So ceiling is the conjunction of the following statements. And it's essentially, I mean, more or less the answers to the, que or the questions I put before. So um, we say, okay, for every set generic G, uh, L gamma infinity G R G is a model of determinacy. Its set of reals is exactly gamma infinity. See, this is connected whether this is a model of ADR. And you can ask, okay, is there for every consecutive generics G and, and H an elementary embedding between these models? And actually, I mean, we don't want it to be an arbitrary elementary embedding. I mean, there's a canonical one in the sense that we, should, we know what it should do with the UV sets. If you take a universally bare set, it should move to its canonical extension. That's the only way it makes sense here. Yeah? Okay, but as you can see, I mean, I put this as a definition, not as a theorem, um, because, I mean, there's a theorem, there are many theorems about it, but it's not as simple as before. Yeah, so the question is, can we get ceiling? And, well, we can be even more strict and just ask even more. I mean, can we add theta regular in addition? So theta regular doesn't show up in the original definition of ceiling, but it makes sense to just add it there. Okay, so wouldn't proved um, that this is consistent from a super compact cardinal. So if kappa is super compact, and then you collapse two to the two to the kappa to be countable, and there's a proper class of wooden cardinals, then ceiling holds in the generic extension. 
And the reason why we are interested in ceiling is, I mean, this is another motivational slide about inner models, that this has actually a dramatic effect on the inner model program. So why is this the case? I mean, I motivated earlier that for all the models that we know so far, I mean, it would be very nice that it actually is indeed the case that the, the iteration strategies that we know are universally bare. So um, this is related to the fact, or this can be used to prove that in all known canonical in our models, there's a well-ordering of the reals. That's in L gamma infinity R. Just because the iteration strategy helps us to define the well-ordering of the reals, if the iteration strategy is universally bare, it's in gamma infinity, and so the well-order is there as well. But now wait a minute, if there's a canonical well-order in L gamma infinity R, then we cannot have that L gamma infinity R as a model of determinacy, because in models of determinacy, there's no omega-1 sequence of reals. So we already have a contradiction. I mean, we don't even need to say the generic absoluteness part. Already the ID part seems to contradict what we want to do in inner model theory. Yeah? So actually, ceiling can be thought of an anti-inner model hypothesis. So an interesting question is, well, how strong is this actually? <laughs> okay, I mean, we are doing this here from a super compact. So, I mean, we are beyond the area where, where inner model theories usually work anyway, so that seems to be okay. But uh, Grieger and Nam Chuang showed I mean, I think in 2019 that uh, we should be more careful because ceiling is actually consistent from a wooden limit of wooden cardinals, which is at the center of where current inner model theory is taking place. Um, I mean, this still doesn't prove that there is no inner model theory at that level because, I mean, this is a consistency result. I mean, the real shock would be if there's a large cardinal that directly implies ceiling because then we would know that there is no inner model for that large cardinal of the current form with universally bare strategies, for example. Okay, but so this is just as a warning and as another motivation why we're interested in these kind of properties. So what I want to move on to now is to look at extensions of this. Yeah, I mean, we looked at L gamma infinity R, but can we actually build stronger models? Because to force over them, we need to have even more properties. And in some sense also to overcome the difficulties that ceiling imposes, it seems like looking at higher order objects in these kind of models is a good approach. So what sort of canonically, I mean generically absolute uh, subsets of gamma infinity can we add to the model L gamma infinity R? So let me on this slide just outline the result and then I will give you a little bit more details and state it more precisely in the following slides. So what is the idea? I mean, what we want to do is we want to consider the set of all canonical subsets of gamma infinity, and we call this the UB power set of gamma infinity. I will define what that is here. And then the result is that if we, if we have some many very large cardinals, and I will specify what they are in the future as well, and we look at some collapse extension, then actually this model um, where we add this canonical subset of gamma infinity. And I mean, here I got rid of the redundancy. I mean, we can add gamma infinity and the reals as well. Yeah, so this is an extension of L gamma infinity R. This is a model of determinacy. Yeah, I mean. You get theta diagram in this model and the ETR? Yes, but just wait a little bit. <laughs> the quick answer is yes. <laughs> and I even get ceiling, yeah? Um, so, I mean, in this model, I mean, we get, I mean, okay, 80 plus is sort of automatic from the proof, but it just, I mean, as common in determinist theory, I don't want to talk about the plus part. Um, and uh, yes, I mean, I think I didn't state it here because I wanted to wait and introduce the things formally, but uh, I mean, we do get ADR plus theta regular and also some form of ceiling. Okay, so let me start by defining what this UB power set actually is and then uh, tell you what the form of ceiling is that we get and state, state the real result. So back to the original question. I mean, what do we actually want to add? Um, so again, inspiration comes from inner model theory. So um, what we would like to add, I mean, I said that, I mean, the universally bare sets somehow, I mean, they code the iteration strategies for the mice that we currently know. And what we would like to add is like the stack of all sort of mice that we can build over that. Yeah, I mean, so 
X sharp, M1 sharp of X, and like all kind of mice that you can think of. So we want to build the stack of all of these. And um, formally, I mean, in a nice in a model theoretic setting, when you suppose that all all sets of reals are captured by mice, so this is mouse capturing. You can write this down formally in a model theoretically as the lower part stack over, I mean, JG is the ceiling embedding, point-wise image, gamma infinity over some X. So, I mean, as I said, motivation, yeah? Um, but so the idea is that we take X, or like in our case, it would be gamma infinity, and we want to build all the mice that we know and stack them on top. But I mean, I promise that our results will not use any inner model theory, so we can actually phrase this without using mice. Um, by just saying that we take everything that is ordinal definable. So suppose X is a set and let iota of X be the maximum of X and gamma infinity. We define the UB power set of X to be the set of those Y such that whenever we go to a collapse extension, I mean, just collapsing the size of the objects involved, then Y is ordinal definable in L gamma infinity GRG from parameters, and there you can see where the inner model theoretic inspiration comes from. Yeah, I mean, from X, the point-wise image of gamma infinity under the ceiling embedding, and um, that is a point. So, and actually, I mean, just as a comment, I mean, we will be working in a context where ceiling holds. Yeah, I mean, we are talking about extensions of L gamma infinity R, so, I mean, we might as well just suppose ceiling, and then, I mean, it doesn't actually matter which generic you take as long as it's large enough. Yeah, because ceiling freezes the theory of L gamma infinity R. So we don't have to go to exactly that generic extension. It can be any further one as well. Just make everything countable that looks interesting, and then we look at what's OD over that. OK, so, I mean, this might look like a little bit ad hoc of a definition, but I mean, this is why I said it has a deep motivation from inner model theory. I mean, the objects actually show up there. Um, but you can define this. I mean, there's no inner model theory in the definition. <laughs> and also, there's no inner model theory in the statement of the following theorem. So if we look at the, universe, the UB power set of gamma infinity, the universally bare sets in some generic extension, let's call that A infinity again. Uh, suppose there's a super compact cardinal and the proper class of inaccessible limits of wooden cardinals. If we take some inaccessible limit of wooden cardinals above the super compact and we leave a collapse that, then the resulting model, so I mean the model where we have the reals, the universally bare sets, and the canonical power set of the universally bare sets is actually a model of AD. And we can ask again, okay, I mean, we have the first, I mean, there were three things we wanted to have, eh? determinacy, strong determinacy, and generic absoluteness. So, I mean, let me jump to the third one. Uh, so, is there generic absoluteness theorem for this model as well? And, um, I mean, the answer is yes, and I just need to define what I mean by that. Um, so, this is just repeating the notation from the previous slide, I mean, we look at this universally bare power set of gamma infinity and the ceiling embedding, and we say that weak ceiling holds for the UB power set. If first of all, ceiling holds. I mean, ceiling just for the standard L gamma infinity R. The model that we constructed is a model of AD plus, of AD. So, I mean, these are the things that we could prove already. And then we want to have that I mean, again, there's a generic absoluteness theorem. So in this case, uh, we say whenever we take two consecutive generics that are sufficiently far apart from each other. So this is what the weak part of the weak ceiling is. I mean, we restrict the generics and we just say, okay, I want to make sure that the second one collapses two to the two to the omega of the first one. Um, but if it does, then we find this, gener uh, this nice elementary embedding. And let me just remark that um, also this implies that uh, the theory of LA infinity cannot be changed by forcing. Um, so even by smaller forcing, because if you go to a smaller generic extension, you can just pick one that's very far away, and both of them, like the original one and the smaller one, are elementary equivalent to this one. So they are elementary, elementarily equivalent, even though we might not get an elementary embedding between them. 
Okay, so theorem uh, under the same hypothesis as before, I mean, we'd not only get that L of A infinity is a model of AD, we also get that weak ceiling holds. And to make Matteo happy, we can also add ADR plus theta is regular. Yeah, I mean, the reason why I'm stating it in this form is actually because, you know, I mean, this appears in a paper that's already on the archive, and this is appears in a paper that's to be written, but <laughs> there's a proof, yeah. I think I have a chance to mark this in green, right? <laughs> uh, so it's a solid conjecture. Yeah. Um, but the, the proof of the theta regular part is different from the rest. I mean, it's just a general argument showing that theta regular in these kind of models. Okay, so what's the key behind this? Yeah? I mean, how can we all of a sudden prove such strong theorems, adding all of the stuff to gamma infinity? Um, so the key technical lemma is a useful derived model representation. So, okay, I know this looks like a lot of text, so let me just uh, walk you through that. Um, I mean, most of this is just the setup. Yeah, so what we do is, I mean, again, we take two consecutive generic extensions, G and H. Then if we go to a further extension, in this further extension, we can actually find an iteration of the universe um, that will move the supercompact cardinal to omega 1 with these generic extensions. And we can write this model, L gamma infinity, G star H, R G star H, as what is known as a derived model. Um, and if you've seen Wooden's derived model theorem, then you've seen the right-hand side <laughs> of this equality, and the derived model theorem allows you to prove determinacy, for example. Yeah, so once we have this derived model representation, we can use the machinery of the derived model theorem to prove that this is a model of determinacy, and also to prove that this is a model of ceiling, for example, and to prove that it's a model of theta regular. Yeah, so this is really the key behind everything that we find this derived model representation that can be utilized to get all the things that we want from it. Um, so, I mean, in fact, I mean, what we need is a slightly more general version of this. I mean, this version that I stated here gives a new proof of wooden ceiling theorem for the standard L gamma infinity R uh, model. But, I mean, we can prove that you can do these derived model representations by iterations that go through specific parts and, and so forth. I mean, this is like, I mean, it's not only the statement, it's like really the proof that's, that's useful there. And it's so useful that we can even use it in a different context. Yeah, so what I talked about this UB power set is one application of this uh, key lemma. And there's another one, and that's related to these chunk type models of supercompactness measures. So we use the same key lemma, um, and we apply it for a different model. Um, so let me motivate the type of model again. So uh, now I want to look more into like chunk type models. So um, what are possibilities for strong models of determinacy? Well, we can look at the standard chunk model, L over R to the omega. So just adding countable sequences of ordinals. And I mean, I put the conjecture already. I mean, everything I say there should be, I mean, a model of determinacy, maybe even a strong model of determinacy. But we can look at extensions of the Chang model. And they, I mean, for those of you who were at Grigor's talk yesterday, they should look very familiar. So one option is that we just merge the Chang model and the model I talked about in the previous section of the talk. So we add the countable sequences of ordinals, but also the universally bare sets. We can add even more. Uh, we can also add the club filter on P omega 1 alpha for all ordinals alpha. And just ask, okay, what do we know? How about this kind of model? Yeah, so the last one is the one that appeared in Grigor's conjecture yesterday. Um, so, I mean, actually about this very general model, we don't know much, I mean, or we don't know anything, but um, if we restrict ourselves to the hard mass setting, then we can say something. So Grigor showed in 2021 that this model is a model of determinacy, but I mean, in a hard mass setting, so it's not really this model, but um, I mean, you construct it by a direct limit construction over a hot mouse. And with the same construction, actually, with uh, Takehiko Gapo and again Grieger, we showed this year that also if you add the supercompactness measures, um, you can get a model of determinacy. So I put the statement of that result here such that you know, I mean, what, 
what the properties of the model are at least. So, um, I mean, here the large cardinal hypothesis is lower than before. I mean, if we work with hot mice, we can work from a wooden limit of wooden cardinals. And then there's this chunk type model that looks like the one on the right that satisfies ADR plus theta is regular and some level of supercompactness for omega one. So the supercompactness comes from the fact that we can add these club filters there. Okay, so motivated by these results, we can make the following conjecture. And um, so this is close to what appeared in Grigor's talk yesterday already. Um, so suppose there's a super compact cardinal kappa and there's a proper class of wooden cardinals. If we Levy collapse kappa, then, I mean, I believe it should be possible to show that this model, so where we add the countable sequences of ordinals, the UB sets and the reals and um, the club filters is a model of AD and there's a ceiling theorem for that. Plus, uh, I mean, ideally, we would like to, in addition, add that also ADR holds and theta is regular. So how much can we prove? Um, well, I mean, there's a little bit that we can say about adding supercompactness measures also in the general context. So now I'm going away from hot mice again. I mean, let's try to prove everything with pure sort of descriptive set theoretic methods. Um, so recall, I mean, theta regular is just the theory ZF plus ADR plus theta is regular. And we can abstractly define what the theta regular ceiling theorem should be. Um, so if we have some model that is, I mean, defined by some formula. So I'm thinking of canonical extensions of the model L gamma infinity R. Then we say the theta regular ceiling theorem holds if, I mean, ceiling holds, but in the original sense. So ceiling for L gamma infinity R. Um, we have a model of AD plus plus theta regular. So, I mean, this is a little bit redundant, but just to see that we're extending our theories. And we want to have some kind of generic absoluteness. So we want to have, I mean, I say natural embedding. I mean, at least the embedding should extend the ceiling embedding for L gamma infinity R. But depending on what the model is, it might not be clear what natural means. Yeah? I mean, what do you do with the things that you extended? How, they, how should they move in this elementary embedding? But we would like to have something of this form. And so the question is, okay, for which formulas phi, for which extensions of L gamma infinity R does the theta regular theorem, uh, ceiling theorem actually hold in a generic extension just collapsing large cardinals? So without thinking about hot mice or anything, just take a very large cardinal, collapse it, and just prove the theorem in that generic extension. So what we're able to show is if we look at the extension of L gamma infinity R by the club filter on P omega one gamma infinity, then this holds. So, um, I mean, just for completeness, let me just define. So um, if we have an uncountable set, we can define the club filter on X on P omega one X. Uh, if we say that something is a club, if there's a function uh, such that C is the, the set of closure points of that function, and we are interested in the club filter on P omega one gamma infinity on the universally bare sets. So this allows us to canonically extend L gamma infinity R. And um, again, this is a vague theorem. I will give you the more precise one in a bit. So if there's some very large cardinal and I mean the proper class of wooden cardinals as usual, in some generic extension, there's a ceiling theorem. I mean, there's even the say the regular theorem for this extension. So for L gamma infinity R with C infinity. So what is the very large cardinal and what is the generic extension? Um, so the large cardinal is something that follows from a two huge cardinal. So uh, we say kappa is elementarily huge if there's an elementary embedding such that, I mean, it's huge, so it's closed under J of kappa sequences, but also VJ of kappa is an elementary substructure of V. And for such embeddings, um, we can look at the elementary huge supercompactness target so um, we can just look at the supremum of all of J of F of kappa for F a function in V. Um, and we can just look at the least such target. I mean, let me give you the motivation for this. Yeah? I mean, again, the motivation somehow comes from inner model theory, but this is more abstract. I mean, just if you take, if you have such an elementary, elementarily huge 
embedding J, you can just look at the kappa lambda extender derived from J. And if you do that, there's a canonical factor map. So there's a map K from the ultra power into M. And um, it's such that, I mean, the ultra power embedding pi E moves kappa to lambda, the critical point of the factor map is lambda, and V lambda is contained in the ultra power. So in fact, this pi E, the ultra power embedding, is a super strongness embedding, this target line. So this is why it's the super strongness target for the elementarily huge cardinal. And I mean, the point of looking at this is because this is what we want to collapse here. <laughs> so um, in the theorem, if we start with an elementarily huge cardinal and a proper class of wooden cardinals, then if we collapse two to the elementarily huge super compactness target of kappa, so the lambda above there, then there's a theta regular ceiling theorem for this model. So L gamma infinity R C infinity is a model of AD, it's a model of ADR, it's a model of theta regular, and there's an elementary embedding between co uh, consecutive generic extensions of this model. So let me close by giving you the conjecture again and just summarizing. So, I mean, all of the models I showed you are, in somehow, are somehow related to this conjecture. Yeah, and uh, I mean, the step that we've seen, I mean, it starts essentially from wooden ceiling theorem for L gamma infinity R. And then, I mean, I talked about adding the UV power set, adding the super compactness measure on this side. And in the hot mouse setting, you know, you can get something that looks like this conjecture, but I mean, this is a little bit cheating because, I mean, it's not really this model. I mean, it's this in a hot mouse. So what, what does it mean in this hot mouse? Um, so it means that if you start from a hot mouse um, with some large cardinals, you can look at a direct limit. It's called M infinity. And then the model is actually L, uh, the ordinals of M infinity, countable sequences, and so forth. Yeah. And so the this um, model is a set model or is just a class with M infinity? It's a set model. And I mean the and it contains the real universal bird set or it does not? Uh, well, you can make them generic over the model if you start with enough large cardinals. But I mean, th the idea is, I mean, what makes the setting more controllable is that you know that everything you have in this M infinity comes from a point in the direct limit system. You know, in the direct limit system, you can make like all the reals generic. But I mean, the point is that, you know, if you ask a question about M infinity, you don't really have to answer it in M infinity. You go back to the direct limit system and then you can make things generic and you can make an argument there. And in the end, it will go back into M infinity. And this is crucially used um, in the proofs, yeah. I mean, in the proofs that this is a model of AD and the proof that these mu alphas are um, super compactness measures. So um, the model here, I mean, the, the super compactness measures that you have, I mean, they are mu alpha, but not for alpha in the ordinals, but for alpha in some delta infinity, which is the image of a, super, of a wooden cardinal in M infinity. So it's a set size version of that. But, you know, I'm just putting this on one slide because I think all of this is enough evidence here yeah, that this is, I mean, quoting Vincenzo again, I mean, I think this is the right conjecture, but I think it's definitely where we should go. So thank you. <laughs> About seven slides ago, you had this HOM star and <laughs> R star on mm -hmm. in M of G. What are they? Um, so um, in the, for the derived model construction, you look at the Levy collapse um, of some limit of wooden cardinals. And the R star are just the reals that appear in segments of the collapse. And the HOM star are the things that are homogeneously suslin in some segment of the collapse up to the end. I just have a naive question. If you take the largest of these models, uh, the, the L of ordered omega, UB sets, and, and the measures, 
-hmm. What happens if you just, if you forget the UB sets? Mm -hmm. I, I, if, is it, I mean, here you're adding more and more and more. I, I, are the UB sets something that you, to what extent are they all automatically in there if you add just O and or to the omega and the measures? So, I mean, it probably depends on the setting, but I mean, in general, I don't think they will appear automatically. I mean, the reason why we add them is just because we have this motivation from inner model theory sure, in the background sure. that we want to talk about the mice. But actually, I mean, you can use these methods to also answer questions about just the standard uh, Chang model, or to the omega. I mean, actually, Grieger has a paper with his student, Takehiko Gappo, uh, where they prove that you can just get AD in the Chang model. But the way they prove is it using hot mice and getting Results about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that question? Okay. <laughs> to Justin's question, the basically the the strategy of the minimal mouse with wooden minimal wooden is not in the trunk model. But I mean even I have a similar question. Could it be the case that some of these uh, measure ultra filters appear if you cut off before? So you, for example, you just add the measure for uh, Aleph 1 and you get the measure at Aleph 2? Or, or you are sure that you, you really need to add all these ultra filters? So, I mean, I don't know of a single result where you get it automatically mm -hmm. in, in the setting, but I mean, we work kind of hard to add the measures and uh, I mean, actually in the end, I mean, this is also an interesting open question if you can, um, I mean, we proved that you can get that omega one is less than delta infinity super compact. Mm -hmm. I mean, ideally what you want to have is that omega one is fully super compact mm -hmm. in such a model. And for that, you would need to add more, more measures or just show in some sense that there's more space between the theta of the model and, and where you add the measures. But I mean, this seems to be a very hard question. I mean, we tried for a while, but uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting because, I mean, the super compactness of omega 1 seems to be deeply connected with models of determinacy. Yeah. So in some sense, you can see this as another hierarchy. You now you have determinacy, large cardinals, and uh, forcing axioms, and you could just add a hierarchy where you look at models of determinacy where you add super compactness measures, and they seem to be going up very high. I mean, the conjecture would be that this is equiconsistent to a wooden limit of wooden cardinals. I mean, to, to have a model of um, AD, or let's say ADR plus theta is regular plus omega one is super compact. So I conjecture this is exactly at the level of a wooden limit of wooden cardinals. And there are some partial results suggesting that, but it's open, yeah. So also, is it, is it conceivable that you could then add something, something else to one of these <laughs> models? still have a ceiling theorem, still have a strong determinacy model. Mm -hmm. And then when you add the, then you, when you throw in the ordinals to the omega one, you get a full model of choice. Why not, huh? okay. <laughs> I mean, tell me what else to add and <laughs> we will try. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. Are there more questions? Okay, if not, uh, let's thank Sandra again. <laughs> Thank you.